Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. I hope you're having a wonderful day. You're listening to or watching the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Tersh Blissett, sitting virtually next to my co-host, Joshua Crouch. And today we're going to talk a little bit about bringing sexy back, <laughs> making the home service industry um, kind of go, not necessarily go viral, but engaging with the audience in social media and emails and that kind of stuff, how to I don't know. The best way to say it is probably a hook point. Brendan Kane is on the show. He's the author of Hook Point and One Million Followers. Both books are books that I've listened to and read several times. And the content that... That's why you're so popular, Tersh. Oh, is that it? <laughs> Not hardly. <laughs> but I really, it's... I asked Brendan beforehand, and I'm going to ask him again about this, but it's just oftentimes I think about the fact, and I know that our listeners think the same way, that this is plumbing or this is air conditioning. It's easy to go, it, quote unquote, it's easy to go viral if you're, I don't know, Coca-Cola and they're polar bears and stuff like that. Brendan talks a little bit about that in, in Hook Point. But the in reality, you don't have to have a super sexy industry to still get engagement with your audience. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And yeah, Josh, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. At the end of the day, content needs to be interesting. That's what social media is for. People don't go there so they can be inundated with sales offers and stuff like that. They go there so they can be entertained, they can learn and stuff like that. And Brendan's put together some great resources and obviously having him live is a huge treat for us because we don't, honestly, we, we talk about marketing a lot on the show, but we don't really focus on social media a lot. So this is a unique, this is a good episode for those of you who follow us that Go, maybe go elsewhere to find some social media ideas and stuff like that because Brennan's got a lot of really good, some really great stuff. He's very well known for this and out of the box thinking to get your content to get exposure, which can lead to a lot of other opportunities for your business. Yeah. And make sure you stick around to the end because we have some some content to share for you, some ideas. And so I'm really excited uh, about that. And yeah, so let's get ready for the show. Are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven-figure revenue mark? Do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way? Let Tersh Blissett and Josh Crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at Service Business Mastery. Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. Here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. Hey, how are you? Doing well. It's a pleasure to connect with you and everybody that's tuning into this. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks so, for coming on, Brennan. Brennan, will you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, your background, for those who don't know you and haven't heard of you? Yeah, as you mentioned, I published two books on social media, and I've been in social media since 2005, so the earliest stages of it, and have pretty much done every aspect of it. I started off in the film industry building digital divisions for movie studios, built some of the earliest social media technology, like the first influencer technology platform on top of MySpace in 2007, got nice. heavily involved in the paid advertising space on social media platforms and worked with clients all across the board in every single industry and sector. I basically have seen it all. I've seen social media go from a million people on these platforms to 4 billion people in less than 17 years and really have dove into the nuances of what it takes to be successful across any social media platform. So let me ask you, first off, whenever you go viral, typically it's going to be at least nationwide, maybe even worldwide, that you're going to get all of these people that are watching and engaging in your content for a small business owner who maybe only services 60 miles, like that's their own, their main service area. Would it be bad for them to go viral or is there a benefit for them? Should we not even worry about trying to go viral because that's not even... We're not servicing people in the next state over. Yeah, it's a good question. And I think that going viral really means, are you creating effective content that's reaching and engaging people? And the challenge 
with social media is because there's 4 billion content creators on these platforms, there's so much noise out there. And really what controls reach and distribution of content is the algorithms. And there's a lot of myths about the algorithms out there, one of which is that they suppress your reach on purpose in order to get you to pay for reach. And that's just simply not the case because then nobody would ever go viral. So what the algorithms Mm -hmm. really care about is user retention. So what that means is these platforms make money the longer people spend on the platforms. So more the more that they're consuming content, the more ads they can serve, the more profit they generate. Thus, they're looking for content that they can see to the widest possible audience and hold attention. So that's the challenge. And a lot of people are operating off the old paradigm of creative where, hey, we're going to create a niche message for a niche audience. And when we're talking about organic social media, that's not really playing to the fundamental goals of these platforms and these algorithms. So virality can Mm. mean a number of different things, but I think really for a small business in the sake of this conversation is how are we constructing our message in a way that grabs and holds attention long enough to get our point across, whether it is organic, paid, a landing page video, any of those elements that drive our business forward. Would you say that following the foundation and the principles of 1 million followers, your book, 1 million followers, is that something that we should do or try to do as a small business? Or is that something for someone who really wants to go worldwide viral? I, it, it can work for a small business. It can work for a global business. I think that, and I'm one to say that social media is not a requirement to have run a successful business. Like there's so many different ways that you can be successful. Like Josh, I know you work with clients on search, like search is a very effective tool for small businesses. So there's many different ways to be successful. Social media can drive massive benefit to a business, but it's not a requirement. There's so many different ways that you can grow your business. I would say social media, like any discipline in business or life takes a lot of time and resources to get good at. So I would only really enter into it if you have the desire to really get good at this platform, if you have the desire to create the content for the platform, because it does take work and time. Would you say Facebook is dying and TikTok is taking no. it over? I know that. I mean, it's <laughs> I listen, stuff TikTok like that is, all is doing extremely well. It's probably... <laughs> Uh, one of the more popular platforms, but being in this space since 2005, every single year there, since 2005, there's been an article that's ripping on Facebook. Uh, The reality- (laughs) Facebook's an easy target. It is, but (laughs) they're close to 3 billion users. So I would hardly say that it is a platform that is dying. Um, Each platform has its pros and cons to it. If you just master one of the platforms, whether it's Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you'll be set up for success. I would definitely would not say is that, that it's where, dying. Is that where you would suggest it's because it, here's always been my struggle too, even with the content we create here is it like we see what our production team does. We finally hired a production team to splice everything up, do short content, put longer content on YouTube, get it on our website, all of these different things. It is a lot, especially if you're not, this isn't second nature to you. It's a lot of work. Was Is that what you would recommend is Find one platform where you think your primary target audience is and start there and don't worry about some of the other platforms? Or do you have different advice you'd give somebody? Yeah, I definitely recommend focusing in one platform to get really good at. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't take your content and publish it to other platforms, but each platform has specific nuances to be successful with. So just to master one, and I want to narrow in the word master because it's you can easily post content across all of these platforms, but doesn't mean you're having success. So That's really focusing in on one platform, getting really good at that platform. And if you want to post the content on the other ones and not expect a lot from it, you definitely can do that. But narrowing your focus on a single platform and mastering that is really the best place to start. Should the content be... Okay, so let me let's transition into a different question or set of questions. And that would be how do we make something that's not sexy engaging or go not necessarily go viral, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say the I'm gonna say go viral just for the sake of this conversation, 
but not necessarily worldwide viral. I just want to like have a lot of engagement and um, get you more clients. I guess that's the best way to say it. It, how do we make something like plumbing and an electrical service and HVAC service that's not necessarily something that you're going to go search Facebook for? How do you make a content like that engaging enough to get more clients with? Yeah. So first I would say is go in with the mindset of making it globally viral because that's it's going to lead to more clients. You may reach a lot of people that are not your core audience, but it's like the analogy that I like to play is let's just say your average video is generating a thousand views and out of that 50% is your core target audience. So it's 500 people with each post is your core target. Now let's just say we push it up to hundred thousand views of video, but that core target audience drops down to 20%. You still went from 500 potential consumers to 20,000. So that's the power of virality. And it's like, there's a real, a luxury real estate agent named Ryan Serhant and he only sells properties like 10 to 50 million. He actually just listed the most property in New York of 250 million. So his audience wow. size is super niche in terms of what drives his business, but he understands the power of social media, of building his brand and the, how the algorithms work. So what he does that's so brilliant is he makes his content digestible to the general audience. And the way that he does that is, let me take you on a tour of a $7 million closet. Let me take you on a tour of a $250 million oh, ranch. Man. And anybody would be interested mm. to see that. So he generates millions of views off those videos. And if a fraction of 1% is his core target audience, he's still mm. having maximum wins. So your goal in, in, in any of these industries is how do we make anybody interested in our subject matter? And you brought up like plumbing or electricity. The amazing things about those subjects is pretty much everybody on the planet that's on social media experiences <laughs> that. So there's so many different stories that you can tell about plumbing, about water, things that happen in everyday life around plumbing or electricity that maybe frustrates you, annoys you, or fascinates you. So it's really getting into the head of the general per person that you're serving and thinking about what are the stories of that happen to these people every day that you could tap into so that when you're creating a piece of content, anybody could find it interesting. I'll give you another example of a subject matter that's completely not sexy, but has gone viral is taxes. So there's a YouTube account called Clear Value Tax. And one of the things that we do is we look at an account's highest performers, but also their low performers to see what are the differences and the nuances of the storytelling that they're doing. And this guy, what he did was during COVID, he started producing videos around stimulus checks because everybody was interested. Am I going to get a stimulus check? How much is it going to be for? Is there going to be another one? When am I going to get it? And those videos generated millions of views. However, when he does content that is super niche and specific, I'm just going to read some of these like student loan forgiveness update or Fed pivot explained, the performance drops significantly because it's super niche. So what he's oh, okay. tuning into is most people are not interested in taxes. It's annoying to them, but he's tying into a subject matter that everybody was interested in. I shouldn't say ever see everybody, but a majority of the population in the United States was interested in. So that's where it's getting into the head of everyday life of your consumers, of what they go through, what could be interesting for them. Yeah, I like that. And that's a good point because it's very easy for us to get super niche in even like air conditioning. And we start talking about mini splits and filtration and then it's just going to blow everybody off that has a whole home because they don't even because they don't even know what the basic thing is there's i just want it to run yeah and that's they don't want to get any deeper than that but i think if you especially people that are in a home i was going to ask you because you were talking about like the real estate guy who's going through a 250 million dollar house with the closet yeah. and everything else how as far as showing stuff because i know obviously technicians they're in homes every single day what things do they want to be careful of so they don't get in trouble posting 
things from somebody's house or is there something that that guy that you were mentioning, they have them sign like a release form or something like that, just as far as the six of that and how does that work? Is there anything that they need to be careful of when you're creating content to make sure that you don't upset somebody and you're going to get sued because you posted a picture of their Lamborghini in their garage as you're walking through or something like that? Am I frozen or is he frozen? No. <laughs> We're in okay. the froze, froze Can you hear right me now? now? Yeah. yeah so, so now. Yep, go ahead. I'm not going to give legal advice because that's definitely not my area of expertise. You definitely Absolutely. do want to get some type of permission, but you could easily. Okay. That's around plumbing, around electricity and react to it. So that's another way that you can do it where you're leveraging other content that's already published and just reacting to that content. So you're not actually having to go off and film it as well. Say that one more time. You're doing like reaction videos. Reaction videos are a big format. So you can react to okay. other content. Like for example, another subject that's gone viral is medical. So there's a guy named Dr. Mike on YouTube. And what he does is he reacts to medical TV shows. Oh, to see how full, how accurate yeah. they are. Okay. Sorry, you yeah. froze a couple of times. This comment was funny. <laughs> it says, dang, he's so full of information. It freezes. <laughs> but yeah, that's another way to get no. around. You actually have to, to go and film clients content. You can look for other content like plumbing disasters or electricity disasters mm -hmm. or and I know we're talking U.S. specific, but and I'm sure this happens in the U.S., but in London, it was super hot. So people were talking about the heat wave and not having air conditioning and things like that. You can tap into that and get an expert's advice on how to cool your apartment without air conditioning or how to install mm. a makeshift air conditioner or things like that. So be top of mind, you're saying be top of mind based on the news cycle or what's no, going on with climate. I and wouldn't stuff like that. Go chase trends. I'm just saying that those are different. Again, getting in the mindset of the average person and the things that they experience on a daily basis and correlate a story to that or expert advice upon that. Oh, awesome. Um, so you say not chase trends, but be... So like if you know a heat wave is coming or a cold spell is coming or something's coming that's going to affect their daily life and getting in front of that with some type of content can be beneficial. Is that a fair way to say yeah, it? Yeah, I think looking at it from the standpoint of less about, and you can do that. I just think cheating typically is difficult over the long term. I'm thinking more from a standpoint okay. of, getting in the mindset of the average person and what they experience in their daily life as it core. Yeah. That, that makes complete sense though, because if you're trying to chase the trends out, like if you're trying to chase any kind of, whether it's a weather trend or the next viral trend, it's difficult to, you're always very reactive of, you have to be very fast to react and you have to put the content out there very quickly. It may not be the best content, but versus planning something out very quick and doing it exactly. I don't know. The problem that I have is that I'm an over planner. Like I'll plan plan and then it never gets released or <laughs> it gets released way late. So if I try to do anything along with the trend, it's perfection is the enemy of complete. And that's me to a T. No, definitely. And the other thing that I would say about trends is trends are like the iceberg analogy where you see the tip of the iceberg above the water. That's the people that are successful with trends, but the majority of people are unsuccessful. Like 99% of people are unsuccessful. And that's the big distinction of kind of our process for other people's process. At the ultimate failures and understanding why people fail with those trends. Okay. So with that being said, I think that what one of the things that it's crazy that I see this, my wife and I will watch a TikTok and, and someone will be reacting to someone else's 
you know, TikTok or they'll use their voice or their sound, I think is what they call it. And then we'll go look at the original video and it'll have a quarter of the views that the review of their or the, the reaction video has a million follow views. And then this other one has like 10,000 views or something ridiculous. And we're like, how did that one get more views than the original? How did the reaction get even more views than the original video? So it's almost like people engage with those reaction videos some more so than the original sometimes. Again, it's the context. It's again, like Dr. Mike, where he's reacting to real TV shows as people want to see field. So it's like, sometimes they want to hear the context. Like one of the formats that we've broken down is lawyers reacting to accidents, like a car accident or something in a store. And the lawyer is breaking down whether the, who's at fault in the accident, who's at fault in the store. So they want to see, hear this expert opinion around this context. And sometimes that context allows it to drive more virality than the original video itself. So oftentimes what we're really focused on in working with people is it's not really about the content, it's the context. It's to be made to go viral if it's positioned in the right way. And that's, again, talking about the tax guy is people don't really care about the minutiae details of the Fed lowering like interest rates because the general person, population doesn't care, but they do care about a stimulus check. So again, it's really understanding of how you're contextualizing it where anybody could be interested in what's happening rather than the original maybe just playing to a very specific audience. That's a really good point. That's, that, that gives me different ideas in my head. And, and I can see why certain things have that I see are successful. And I understand a little bit more as to why that's the case. Brandon... Where can people learn like more about you and where can they learn more about what you have going on? Obviously, you need to pick up the book. This is one, at least one of his books, Hook Point, How to Stand Out in a Three-Second World. And then your website, what, uh, hookpoint.com, but then there's a, you have another one too as well. Is that yeah, correct? it's uh, goviral.hookpoint.com. And essentially there, we have a private community where every week we do like a live mastermind where our team is getting on Zoom, breaking down a different content creator, a viral format, and explaining these nuanced details of understanding why things are going viral and how you can take those learnings and apply it to your content. So each week we do this live where people can ask questions, but then we give people access to the research that we've done and also like an activation guide that summarizes all the learnings for that week. So one last thing before we close up things, I want to ask you about email marketing. And just because I was listening to it, to you talk about it this morning, one of the things that I heard you say, you were reaching out to a group of people and the audience or the emails, you were talking about the emails not to send to people, the emails that you've received and you're like, don't send me like, hey, investor, Hey, potential investor, like blah, blah, blah. One of the things that I noticed that you said there in the book, and it was hook point, I believe that you mentioned you, you did research on the individuals before you sent them the emails. And then second off, you sent out 20 emails. Is that for, is that something you would recommend for a small business to do Send that small of a volume and do extensive research on each person or is that because you were targeting people that I think it was around Disney, a Disney platform or something like that? Yeah, it depends on the deal size. If your deal size is super high, customizing it for each one. If the deal size is lower, then customizing each one would be difficult. I think that the biggest thing to understand is the world that we live in today, every person, all of our consumers are professionals at consuming content because we have more content available to us than ever. And it's not just That's social true. media. You think about television with Netflix and Amazon Prime and all this stuff. And the same goes for emails. We get more emails than ever before. So we, and I'm sure that anybody listening to this can spot this. If you go into your email, you can know right away 
whether it's a sales pitch or a marketing pitch versus it's something that's providing value. So really go mm -hmm. in again with that mindset of being the person on the other side of the screen. And how do you contextualize that message where it doesn't just come off as, oh, this is just another marketing pitch. So oftentimes we find a lot of success in almost, not almost, but thinking about if you were to write a friend, like a personal friend about something, how would you write mm. that email versus the traditional ways that most people are writing those emails? And that goes to the subject line and that goes to the body of the message. And oftentimes you will see a massive distinct shift in how you approach that copy if you're positioning it in that way. That's a great tip for email marketing. <clears throat> and even as our industry is getting into a little bit more of text message marketing and not so much like broadcast messaging, but more like after an estimates left or after they did a job, like following up with certain things, but talking like you are talking to your neighbor, your friend, your relative yeah. versus talking to like boring business jargon type follow up. I think that's a great tip for hopefully the, uh, the audience that's listening is writing that one down. That's a great tip. If you guys want to start doing some of your own email I would, uh, marketing, I would challenge you make sure that it's professional friends, not necessarily some of the text messages that I send <laughs> to my other friends <laughs> or some of the crap you send me. <laughs> but I think it's an interesting exercise is to go through your email of emails you sent to your friends Put that on one That's side of the point. screen and then the emails that you're sending out to your list or potential customers and just look at the, the differences in the language and things like that. For example, it's like subject lines, like doing all caption case on a subject line. You would never do that for a friend. Yeah. That's a simple, exactly. a simple thing. And it's very simplified. Like I, I think about whenever I send Josh a message. It's not, hey, You're Josh, not thinking about it. Hey, Joshua Crouch, check out this <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I found this message and you should check it out. And it's always, can, it, can you get too informal? Not necessarily what I was, my example I was saying earlier, like how I would send to Lance, my buddy, informal wise. But because like when I'm sending something to Josh, it's usually I, I skip the introduction of, Hey, Josh, typically it's just, Hey, send me over this blah, blah, blah. Or, Hey, I found this, check it out. I think you're going to get some good value out of it. And it, I leave it at that. Do I, do we leave the names out or do we still need to keep, does that part of the introduction, is that important? Because I've seen some people say if you're, if their name is in the subject line, they're more likely to open it and stuff like that. I don't know if that was true in your findings. I think it's all again, a there's so many variables that go into that. What is the subject line? I think that having the name does help because it feels like it is more personal versus if you're just sending it without it. It's something to yeah. test. But okay. like, for example, what we were talking about last time or earlier is just like an example of sending a personal note. Hey, Josh, there's a blizzard coming two weeks from now and there may be electricity blackouts or something like that. I'd love to come by and just expect inspect to make sure that doesn't happen to you versus, Hey, Josh, we are an electrical electricity company that does X, Y, and Z. We'd like to schedule an appointment with you to work with you on this. That's a great Again, point. it's like, what would you say to, yeah. to a friend type scenario? <clears throat> That is true. It is. That's a great point. I think if nothing else, that's a major golden nugget from this, this conversation for sure. Brendan, we really appreciate you hanging out. Josh, is there anything else that you want to ask before? I... No, no, this was great. I love that we, that the focus shifted to this type of stuff. I think you gave some great tips. We will put for those listening, we will put both of Brennan's books in the show notes. If you have not listened to those, are they both on audible or are they both just hard they are. They're, yeah, they're okay. all so, Audible, Kindle, hardcover. Okay, so you can listen to them, or if you want to pick up the hard hardcover, you can get that as well. So we'll put those in the show notes for you. And then we have the, it's on the bottom of the screen right now, if you're watching this, but it's uh, goviral.hookpoint.com to join their, it's weekly, their weekly group and start going over different ways where you guys can start enhancing your content regularly. 
Cool. I'll actually, will t- I'll add something to that. The first 10 people who email me, actually the first 10 people who message us on servicebusinessmastery.com at the bottom of that voice <laughs> thing that I've been added to our website, our voice chat. I'll send you a copy of this book, Hook Point, How to Stand Out in a Three-Second World. I'll get a copy of it and send it over to you. It's a really good book and worth the read as well. But with that being said, Brendan, thank you again for coming on the show and hanging out with us for uh, for this Yeah, morning. my pleasure. It was great to connect with the both of you and everybody that tuned in for this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Also, if you're listening to or watching this episode, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And until we talk again next time, we'll see you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.